In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Bootstrap framework. The Bootstrap project is designed to facilitate rapid website development. Developed by the nice folks at Twitter, Bootstrap offers an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript base for your designs, including built-in forms, buttons, tables, grids, and navigation elements. Among Bootstrap's more impressive tricks is the Grid Layout tool with support for advanced features like nested and offset columns. And you can get it in a responsive flavor, which is most important for us. Let's take a look at Bootstrap. So this is the uh, front page of Bootstrap. It's located at getbootstrap.com. And there's a button here to download it. Now, I don't want you to download Bootstrap. We're going to use a thing called Initializer, which will include Bootstrap plus a couple of other uh, interesting things. A lot of this is written for uh, programmers. You really don't have to get super deep into Bootstrap in order to use it effectively. Let's get started with it. Uh, once again, there's Bootstrap. This first page talks about uh, a lot of programming aspects, uh, CSS, JavaScript, um, basic template. But uh, interestingly, it gives some examples. So uh, one example is a starter template. Now the starter template that comes with the, the download in Bootstrap is not the same starter template that will we will see with Initializer. This starter template is, is very basic, but it has a top navigation, a place to put your project name, which would be the, the name of your museum, a button for home. The project name can often be also the home button, so uh, don't necessarily need that home button. Uh, most people, when they click on the icon or the uh, logo of the website that takes takes them back to home. There's an about and contact. They're not linked. This is just a very a blank page with a top menu, and that's that's it. This is a theme example. This has a, a hero element plus different styles of buttons. These styles are built in. Different styles of tables. You can have open table or uh, enclosed. You've got different kinds of thumbnails that have nice curved corners, labels, badges, drop-down menus, navigation. So you have the ability to place uh, a nav like this anywhere on the page. Nav bars as well uh, usually go at the top and they can be enclosed or they can go across the screen. Alerts, progress bars, lists are not just with bullets. They can be grouped. They can have multiple lines. Panels. A well is uh, a light a light gray box with a light gray outline with text in it. You've got built-in carousels. So if you assume that this would have images, this would be the first image. Click on it, it goes to the second image and the third image, and then it loops back to the first. Here are some examples of uh, different kinds of grids. If you want three equal columns, you uh, describe them using the call setting. And in this case, this says use call for medium display, which goes across four grids or four uh, columns. This next one, 
does the same thing, four columns and four columns. You can have unequal columns. You could have a three, three columns, uh, six columns, and three columns, or two, eight, and four. The columns have to equal 12. So if you add them up and you have less than 12 or more than 12, then you um, are introducing an error. You can have nested columns. You can create very, very sophisticated layouts that modify themselves automatically based on whether uh, the user's got a mobile device or a desktop device or a tablet device. And so you would combine the column uh, commands. In this um, example, this is um, medium display and extra small. Another example of a starter template. This is the hero area, or it's also called a jumbotron, with three equal, equally sized columns. Down here is a footer. Now you see here that this footer is not sticky. It's uh, the default footer. So in this case, if the display doesn't go all the way to the bottom, there's a space underneath the last element on the page. There's a sticky footer. So if you don't have enough information on the page to go all the way down to the bottom, it makes a space in the middle, and it sticks the footer down here. So this footer is always at the bottom of the page. Different kinds of nav bars. So you've got this uh, nav bar which is centered. It gets shorter and then it goes into what's called a hamburger. This is the hamburger here. And if you're using a uh, smartphone, this is the kind of thing you would see. You wouldn't see the nav bar across the screen because, of course, the text would be very, very small. It drops into hamburger mode, and then you click on this with your tap on it with your finger, and it brings a drop-down menu. And this is all embedded within the responsive bootstrap setup. So this particular nav bar is enclosed, and it's got uh, space on the left and right. So a static top nav bar, if you scroll, it scrolls up and out of the way. You can also have uh, fixed nav bar. So if you scroll, it stays always at the top. And you can see the last two nav bars go all the way across the screen. But they all have the hamburger. We've got different custom components here. Looked at the sticky footer. You can also disable the responsiveness. I don't know why you would do that, but you can do that. And it's supported by browsers in Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows. Certain elements are not supported in Explorer 8 and 9. For example, box shadow is not, ex not supported in Explorer 8, but it is supported in Explorer 9.
In CSS, you've got Let's take a look at the grid system in more detail. You have, in terms of options for devices, you've got large devices, which is specified by the call LG, medium devices, anything that's greater than 992 pixels across would constitute a medium device. Large device would be uh, anything more than 1,200 pixels across. So this particular display is, uh, would constitute a large device. Tablets, anything larger than 768 pixels, you define that using the call SM, and then the call XS, extra small devices. And an example of the columns that you can make use of in fact, here's the code here. You start with a div with a class equals row, and that defines this block here. This is one row. And within that, you create other divs that have a class of call MD. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 columns here. And each one has its, can have its own text in it. So this is the definition. This is the content inside this column. Then when I'm finished with this row, I can create another row. And in this case, I'm defining a column of eight wide, eight columns wide and four columns uh, wide here. You can create fluid containers, and you can combine the column definitions to make very sophisticated layouts that combine elements from different sizes of screens. You've got different components like glyph icons, built in. Drop down menus, you can have these anywhere on the on the page. Headers, which are like drop downs, dividers, um, align. Button groups, button toolbars, you can nest, so you can have one, two, and then a drop down. Different colored button drop downs, and so on. You can have tab navigation, you can have pill navigation. You'll have to make uh, a nav bar. And this is an example of a nav bar. This is an enclosed nav bar. This is the code that would go into making this. You probably won't need a drop down menu, so all you have to do is find that part of the drop down and delete it. So that would be this section right in here. different forms, buttons. Down here is the hero unit or the jumbotron. This is just specified by putting creating a div called class jumbotron. The jumbotron has an H1 and then uh, inside your P elements would be this. You can have a button with a link to a page. And this is the code that actually shows this jumbotron.
There are different JavaScripts that are built in. The uh, one that you might want to try out is a carousel. So the carousel has images that will uh, cycle through. You can have any number of slides. There are three slides here. You can use the arrow keys or you can jump directly to them by clicking on the buttons here. So let's take a look at uh, actually installing Bootstrap using Initializer. 